Welcome back everybody. As you probably guessed from the title of the video, we are going over this pistol right here. This is the newest Canic to be imported into the US. This is the SFX Rival. There's two different versions of it in terms of tone. This one is the all black version, then they have a two tone version as well. Um, but basically it's a full size gun and it was designed to be like sort of like the ultimate out of the box competition gun. But of course it can do a ton of other things, but uh, there's a lot that comes with it. There's a lot of uh, modularity that goes with the Canic SFX series and really the Mete series that pre preceded it and uh, with that I suppose we'll get up close and personal and start going over some of the details. We've got one in the chamber and the magazine topped off with 18 rounds. Uh, some guns have a hard time with this just due to the pressure from the slide in the magazine. We'll see how it does. Can't do any better than that. The rival comes in a padded case, as you guys can see here, has that foam on there, and we have a number of things going on here in the case. We have uh, three different back straps that you guys should be able to see there that are very easy to change. Uh, this tool, which works for a number of different things on the gun, and then uh, a couple of extra fiber optic sight inserts, should you lose yours for whatever reason, because that does happen with fiber optics. Then we have this right here, which is a multi-purpose item. It's actually a tool. Uh, uh, itself with that uh, muzzle there and then it has a number of screws uh, extra mag catches all of those sorts of things that are in there as well um, and we'll put those back in and continue on in the back pouch here we also have our manual a lot of different things in there to check out uh, one of them that i thought is particularly interesting for most of you is going to be the optics plate uh, mounting setup that you see here so really just about any popular optic out there on the market they have a plate for it which is cool um, so we have a warranty other stuff like that in this little case but it is designed to be flipped like so. Additionally, I should point out there actually is a cleaning rod and brush that comes with it. I just removed it to clean it. Uh, additionally, we do have our spare magazine, our magazine loader, and when it comes from uh, the factory, there is these base plates on there, which are just a standard base plate. And then these are uh, replacement ones here that you can add yourself and it's just a little bit larger. It doesn't add any capacity to it, uh, but it adds just a little bit of weight and bulk, uh, particularly if you're gonna run it with the magwell on there. When you insert it with these ones, which are again, 18 rounds, it gives you a little bit of play there if you need to strip and rip it versus the factory flush fit ones. Um, it also comes with this magwell here, which is nice. Uh, it's removable. There's a little set screw there, as you guys can probably see. But really with that super wide magwell, there's about no excuse for actually missing a reload on this one. Very, very easy. The actual frame itself has a magwell bevel to it. And then of course, just add this aluminum one and it just makes it even larger one thing i like about it personally is the way my hands fit on it it gives me sort of like a consistently placed portion uh, where i can just get a little bit more torque on it to control that recoil uh, which is relatively minimal with the gun anyway but it is nice and consistent for me and i do like the mag ball on there if you're not going to be carrying it concealed i personally recommend it but i suppose ultimately that is your call we have our optics plates here which are nice um, aluminum. They are cut for, of course, different optics as you guys just saw. This one here has the rear sight built into it. Uh, so that way, if you're using your mechanic sights, uh, you can have a co-witness, which I certainly do like. And you can also see that we do have helicoils cut in there for the screws, which is nice. A lot of optics plates and systems out there do not have that. It's definitely a bonus in my opinion. See how it runs with some hollow points, have some Federal 124 grain plus P's here. And, uh, See how she eats them. It's fine. Now we'll get into the actual details on the pistol itself. So of course we'll clear it first. Again, a two 18 round standard capacity Mechgar magazines. Now you're probably wondering why it doesn't come with a 20 rounder. Um, and the reason for that, and the reason for the length of 
the two different base plates is so that it doesn't violate any of the rules of competition in terms of size. I know some competitions make you put a gun in a box and if it doesn't fit in the box then it's no good and the 20 rounders will do that uh, for some competitive circles so that's why we have our 18 round flush fitters there. Again an optional magwell on there and of course our interchangeable back straps. The tool that we just showed you earlier is what you can use to drive out that roll pin and then of course they come right out. You can slide your next one back up in there. Uh, grip is the same if you guys have used the Mete series. It's very good. Um, it's just excellent right up here on the front. It has that good grip texture. Very aggressive texture here on the rear. It's very similar to a Gen 4 Glock um, in terms of what they put there on the back of their pistols, but it has a good texture overall. It's not going to braid your skin if you're carrying it concealed for whatever reason, but it definitely lets you get a good hold on the pistol for sure. Our magazine catch is reversible, and the one that it comes with from the factory is a large one that we have right here. Um, I personally just do not like enlarged uh, mag releases, but for the competitive circle that can be a very important thing, and I know a lot of folks out there do like them. Uh, continuing up, you can see that we do have the ability to get pretty darn high on the back of the gun. Additionally, we do have a striker indicator on there. Um, so that way, when you pull the trigger, the gun tells you that the striker is not pre-cocked. And then when it is, you're aware of that as well. It's actually tactile as well. So if you're operating in low light, you can do a quick check just to see if your striker is ready to fire. Uh, we have our ambidextrous uh, slide lock and slide release. Of course, press up on it to lock to the rear and then press down to release. Has good texturing on that as well. Um, with a lot of pistols, I will accidentally bump it, causing a false, either a false slide lock or no slide lock. With this gun, I haven't hit it at all with my high thumb grip, so kudos to them for that. Uh, continuing forward, you guys can see we have a nice double undercut trigger guard. Uh, lets you get nice and high up on there for with both hands, which I do like. It's a fairly large trigger guard as well. And then let's talk about this trigger. I'm wearing a lavalier mic. I'm not sure if it'll pick up the reset all that well, but we have an aluminum trigger with a flat face. Of course, we have this little trigger safety as well, so that way it helps it be drop safe. And then if you don't press it, the trigger will not go back at all. Let's check this thing out, though. So we have our pre-travel, brake, super crisp, no over-travel as you guys can see. I mean, it's as crisp as can be, brakes right around four pounds, the reset is super positive and short. So if you really want to get on the gun and shoot this gun fast to shoot to reset with a little bit of practice, you definitely can do so. Uh, continuing on forward there, we do have our 1913 rail. And then we have uh, the slide that's got a little bit of material taken out of there. Um, same is going to be true up here on this portion of the slide. And uh, you guys can see that we do have very aggressive uh, serrations, both front and rear and top. Um, so there's no excuse for not being able to cycle this gun. Um, either way you want to do it, we have these windows cut out here. I would imagine that is to make the slide a little bit lighter in terms of the reciprocating mass that you're going to get, again, just to make follow-up shots a little bit faster if you're out there competing against the clock. Uh, the slide profile is different than the Mete's as well. That one kind of came up here, was short, and then went in. Not on these. These have a lot more meat on it, which allows for those serrations to be there. Um, I suppose ultimately it's a kind of a preference thing, but both of them do indeed work. Up here towards the muzzle, you can see we have a cutout. Again, a little bit less mass going back during recoil. And of course we have our barrel there with the 11 degree crown. Front sight is a fiber optic front sight. And then the rear that comes with it from the factory setup here is this rear sight, which is adjustable for both windage and elevation and has a flat back black serrations rather, I should say, that really allow you to pick the front sight up quite easily. And it has a lot of room between it as well. So if you're trying to make precision shots at distance, that certainly helps with that versus a wider front sight that would kind of occlude your sight picture. Disassembly of the pistol is pretty straightforward. Basically, we're just going to verify that we are clear and we are at this point. We'll let our slide go home, point in a safe direction, press the trigger, pull back slightly on the slide, just like so, about a quarter or an eighth of an inch, pull down these two tabs, 
and you will see our slide comes off. You do not have to slide it all the way forward. Uh, getting a look in there in terms of the actual frame, you see our steel reinforcements there at the front and rear, and uh, pretty similar to what we've seen from Canix in the past, which certainly isn't a bad thing at all. Uh, moving on to our recoil spring assembly. It is all steel, which I know a lot of folks dig. Uh, I really don't care either way. Both work in my opinion, but hey, is what it is. And we have our barrel, which is a five inch affair. It has these fluted cuts on there. I'm not sure that they actually do much, but I'm sure they do allow for a little bit more debris and oil to build up in there and not cause reliability issues. And then we have these sort of serrations, I suppose you could say, on the barrel itself. My guess is that's mainly for aesthetics, just to kind of be in line with what you see there on the top of the slide but we do have a nice wide polished feed ramp uh, for feeding hollow points which we've had no issues doing at all so far with the pistol which certainly is nice and then taking a look there on the inside of the slide you guys can see that all of these portions here which are uh, function of the striker itself are polished up for a nice crisp trigger break and uh, no chatter marks, nothing like that. Exactly what you'd expect from Canic has that nice nitrided finish on there and it's going to be good for corrosion resistance, uh, surface hardness, lubricity, all of those sorts of things. And of course, putting it back together is the same just in reverse order. And what you want to do here, if we can actually align it correctly, is that little gap right there. We're going to align that with this portion that sticks out right here, like so rack the slide and we're back together. In addition to launching the rival, Canic did send their new optics out as well. These are the Mechanic optics. And you can see here, we have a small footprint one and then a larger footprint one. Of course, as you guys saw from the uh, screenshot earlier with the plates, both of them will work on there just fine. This one, of course, is gonna have an automatic sensor. And both of these have very long battery lives. Both of them have three MOA dots and both of them have the auto off feature as well which is cool uh, this one here has the ability to manually override with the larger size whereas this one again is just going to be auto sensing and then adjusting the brightness accordingly got it loaded up with some steel case red army standard see how it eats that If I could shoot, it'd be good, but it ate it up. Now we've got a good look at the gun up close and personal. One thing I neglected to show you was the holster that it comes with. So it comes with a holster that has no active retention or anything like that. Obviously it clicks into place and locks, which is nice. Um, but in terms of drawing and stuff like that, it's very, very easy to do so. And it's an improvement in my opinion on their previous holsters. Speaking of that, that's one thing about Canic that I appreciate is that they listen to feedback from their customers. So right now, I don't know how many different versions of the Canics have been out but there's a lot of them, probably at least 15. And uh, some of them have different features, pros and cons, but one thing they do is they've evolved their line based on feedback from the customers. So one thing, just as an example, the holsters, the old holsters used to have a janky retention system. They've gotten rid of that and now they make much more usable and much more just better holsters, I guess you could say. Uh, additionally, the optics system has improved. They have a couple different options now where when you change your plate out, you can still have a rear sight, which is awesome. Um, that's something I personally like because I just like having backup, right? Sometimes things go down. And speaking of that, in this particular case, the first optic that they sent out, which was the uh, version one, the, the smaller one that you guys just saw, we were running that. Unfortunately, that one didn't work out and died on us. Basically, uh, it kind of worked for a little bit when I would smack it, it would turn on, and then eventually it would just turn itself off. But because of that, because of the rear sight that was built into that mount, I was still able to use the pistol perfectly fine. Now to Canix Credit, they replaced it overnight shipping, sent the new one out. So you guys will get an update on that optic in the future. Um, but in terms of the optic mountains, mounting system, having those options to have the rear sight integrated, my opinion is a good thing. Um, additionally, some folks have wanted these lightning cuts on different uh, models. Some folks didn't, some folks are afraid that there can be debris or stuff like that that gets in there. That said, just kind of a tangent, if you go look around YouTube, you'll see a torture test of a Glock 34, which has an opening very similar to that. And the gun does insanely well. So I wouldn't be too worried about that personally. Um, but so they've offered both, which is nice. Again, just, they're just listening to the customer base. The same is true here for the uh, iron sights. They've 
had just basic steel white dots, but of course they've improved on them as they've gone along because people have asked for better sites and they've delivered. So uh, definitely not mad about that at all. Um, in terms of reliability, this pistol here has just over 600 rounds through it. Most of that being 115 grain and 124 grain minute man munitions, which is our pistol ammo sponsor here, which we appreciate. And uh, definitely some hull points thrown in as well that you guys have seen zero malfunctions of any kind, which is exactly what I would expect from these pistols. Canix, in my use, have been extremely reliable. And if you go over to the military testing that uh, Turkish military did on these guns, and we actually look into the data, very, very impressive in terms of reliability. Now, this particular offering, the trigger is phenomenal. It's absolutely among the best striker fire triggers on the planet. Um, the previous versions that were polymer were very good as well. Being aluminum, it's just a little bit crisper, which is kind of hard to do if you've used any of the previous Canic uh, striker fire triggers. They're all really, really good, but this one's just a scotch better, um, which I personally appreciate. Really, like I was saying, the accuracy, practical accuracy with this pistol is just awesome. It's as good as any pistol out there on the market. Recoil impulse, nice and smooth. Um, there's really not a lot to complain about in terms of the firearm itself. Now, in terms of cost, this one was sent out to be full disclosure by the folks over at Century Arms, but these aren't on the street right now as of when I'm filming this video. They just got announced today as of when I'm recording. But the MSRP is just under $700. I think it's $679 for these. And again, you get a lot with the pistol for that. Of course, street price will very likely be a little bit lower depending on the politics of the time. But in terms of an out of the box, competition ready gun, if you will, um, it's definitely one to look at if I was looking for something like that. Additionally, a home defense gun, absolutely. If you're looking for a pistol for that role, this one would be a good one in my opinion. Um, some folks don't like such a nice trigger on a home defense gun. I would have zero issues with it personally um, of course just fire follow the basic safety rules and you'll be just fine but all in all the gun has performed very very well which is exactly what i expected it to do and uh, you guys are probably going to see me shooting this a good bit more in the future as we continue to test out those optics and uh, see if that was just a fluke the one that came out to me which i suspect it was I'm sure a lot of you guys are always like, they handpick stuff to send to YouTubers. I don't really think they do because we get some lemons here every now and then. But like anything else, all optics, you know, regardless of who's making it, can have a lemon. It is what it is. And we will, again, test the new ones to see if they have improved. But if you guys have any questions, anything that we didn't cover so far in the video, by all means, you can post those at my social media site here that you see on your screen. You can also post them down below in the comments section. Uh, additionally, if you guys aren't seeing two to four videos a week here on the channel, you can sign up for my uh, email list that you see right here. It's an email that goes out at most once a month, sometimes not even. And basically all it has in there is just the videos since the last email went out. So that way there's no giant social media tech giant censoring your eyes for my content. And if this thing goes on sale, anything like that, we will put a link down below in the video description. We will also put that in the daily deals email for you guys, uh, daily deals email on your screen here goes out as the name implies every single day and it has five six seven of the best deals that we find around the internet uh, on guns gear optics etc uh, if it's in the email it's the cheapest that i know of that day anywhere on the internet so that way you guys save some money and you save some time because you don't have to do the looking because i've done it for you and with that i think we'll close the video out thanks for watching guys i truly appreciate it and look forward to seeing all of you in the next video